Shalom, most high in Christ. Bless you. This is Captain Abiel on my right, Officer Gabriel. Welcome to 15 Minutes with the Captain. Today, we're going to talk about the murder of native royalty. This message is geared particularly to my Native American brothers and sisters of the Inuit tribes, of the Native American tribes, of all indigenous uh, peoples. This message is here for you. The atrocities not, that happened not only when Christopher Columbus and um, uh, Hernan Cortez and Pizarro and all these Alvarados and all that, um, till this day, the Native American, the indigenous peoples are being, are still going through the atrocities today. We're going to bring out a couple of things that happened recently. One of the recent things that happened were the two, the 250 children that uh, suffered uh, death in an indigenous school site in Canada. All right. And that's going into the uh, Kamloops, uh, the Kamloops Indian Residential School in British Columbia. All right. The remains of 215 children, some uh, as young as three years old, were found at a site of a former residential school for the indigenous children a discovery can, uh discovery canadian prime minister justin trudeau described as heartbreaking on friday gather of the children who died in the schools of the children who who died sometimes deliberately at the hands of others who were there and in such large numbers um, Survivors talked about, uh, during the time that they were there, about children who suddenly went missing. Some of the survivors talked about witnessing children being buried in large numbers into mass burial sites. Some of the survivors talked about infants who were born to young girls at the residential schools who had been fathered by priests having those infants taken away from them and deliberately killed, sometimes by being thrown into furnaces, they told us. The children were students at the Kamloops Indian Residential School in British Columbia that closed in 1978, okay? Um, when you read about this even further, it, say, it says that the report documented hor horrific physical abuse, rape, malnutrition and other atrocities suffered by many of the 150,000 children who attended the schools typically run by Christian churches on behalf of Ottawa from 1840s to the 1990s. That's recent. A devastating discovery has been made in Canada. The remains of 215 children have been found buried at the site of a former boarding school for Indigenous students. The school in British Columbia was part of a nationwide scheme that took in First Nations children in an effort to assimilate them into Canadian society. Investigations have shown there was widespread abuse. These latest findings are once again opening a wound that has yet to heal. Row upon row of children's shoes, each pair marking a lost son or daughter. In Vancouver, people gathered to mourn the 215 children whose remains were found at a former indigenous residential school with ground penetrating radar confirming the grim discovery. It was shocking at every single level. And, you know, right now, you know, our community is grieving. We all had to um, take time to absorb you know what we were told what we've seen and um you know we're we're still grappling through the effects founded in 1890 the kamloops school was one of canada's state-run indigenous residential schools after being forcibly separated from their parents children were made to convert to christianity and banned from speaking their native languages physical and sexual abuse by headmasters and teachers was common a 2015 report found that over 3,200 children had died from maltreatment and neglect in what it called a cultural genocide. The Kamloops school closed in 1978, but rumours persisted that the deaths of many children had been covered up. Canada's politicians, including Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, said they were heartbroken by the news. 
the Tekemlups to Sequetmeg Nation says it's working with the coroner and museums to try to shed light on the discovery and find records of the children's deaths. You understand what I'm saying? So these things happen to y'all because of the curses. The curses that are written in this book that um, that happen not only to you, but to, to so-called blacks, Latinos here as well. Okay. Um, another thing that went down is something that, that I've been studying for quite some time. It's called the Starlight Tours. All right. There's a, the Saskatoon freezing deaths. All right. There were three, there were three victims in, in, that, that were notable by the name of Rodney, uh, Nastus, Lawrence Wegner, and Neil Stonechild. Neil Stonechild was the one that, that pretty much got, the most the most attention all right he was from the salto first nations teenager who died of hypothermia members of the saskatoon police service took him in took him to the northwest city section of the city and abandoned him in a field on a night where temperatures were below negative 28 or 18 negative 18 fahrenheit uh the practice is known as a starlight tour and a number of such cases in the Saskatoon area have been referred collectively as the Saskatoon Freezing Deaths or the Starlight Tours. All right. Stonechild, uh, Stonechild's friend, Jason Roy, was with Stonechild the night of his death when first interviewed by the police in 1995 days after Stonechild's disappearance. Roy provided a handwritten signed statement stating that he and Stonechild had been uh, had had drunk most of a 40-ounce bottle of vodka between them. Roy also stated that he and Stonechild had partied, uh, had parted company about 11.30 and that he had blacked out and, no recollect and had no recollection of what happened after he and Stonechild separated that night. In 2000, however, Roy stated that the last time he saw Stonechild alive, Stonechild was handcuffed in the back of a police cruiser, gushing blood from a cut on his face. And that the last words Stone Child said to him were, Jay, help me. They're going to kill me. Jason Roy's family was ultimately put into an RCMP witness protection program. Okay. Um, many, many atrocities. A young, young brother. Um, and there's a lot of mystery behind that. No different than the mystery with the 215 uh, children that were put to death. Okay. On top of the abuse that happened with the uh, with, with the uh, uh, other 150,000 children at that school, all right. Another thing that comes to mind is the missing and murdered Indigenous women. Okay, between Canada and America, there's thousands, several thousand women missing for years now. Um, and it says right here, the missing and murdered indigenous women human rights crisis disproportionately affects indigenous peoples in Canada and United States and the United States, notably those of the FNMI, which is the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, and Native American communities. Okay. Uh, in Canada, according to activists, thousands of cases of missing and murdered, murdered indigenous women over the last half century were not properly investigated due to alleged police bias. In the United States, Native American women are more than twice as likely to experience violence than any other demographic. One in three Indian women is sexually assaulted during her life, and 67% of these assaults are perpetrated by other races. Lisa Brunner, executive director of Sacred Spirits First National Coalition states, What's happened to, uh, through U.S. federal law and policy is they created lands of, impu of impunity where this is a playground for serial rapists, batterers, killers, whoever, and our children are not protected at all. There is no protection. There will never be any protection. They will never, ever give us the assistance and the hope that we need in order to live a better life. You know why? Because the better life is where this scripture is. Now, once again, I did make a mention that this Bible that we're about to read, I understand Christopher Columbus, 
Hernan Cortez, all these conquistadors, they came with Christianity. They came with, with Catholicism. They came with Bibles. And the same laws that are in this Bible, all of them, they broke. You understand? The problem is that it was the enemy that brought this Bible to you. We're your brothers. Israel United in Christ, we are related to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans of the, of the world. And we were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth as slaves for not keeping God's commandments. Now watch this. Go to Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 1. Read that. Yes, sir. The book of Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 1. You're going to find out that today uh, the people that put us in slavery, all right, the, the so-called, and this is not a racist statement. The people, the white man, put our people in slavery. No, not only uh, blacks and Hispanics, but also the Native Americans. They were put into slavery as well. Watch this. Verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. Mount Seir is where the, where the Edomites dwell. The Edomites today, according to the Bible, are known as the Caucasian race, the white man. Read on. And prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. So God, in the Bible, God is telling you that he's against the same enemy that bought you this Bible. Read on. And I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Now the Bible's telling you that he's going to cast judgment on the same people who did the atrocities against those children. In, in, the, in the Kamloops, the same thing that, w that went down with uh, Neil Stonechild and the, missing, and, the, and the missing indigenous women. All the atrocities that we went through with, uh, with Sitting Bull, with the, tale of, the, the, ta the Trail of Tears, all these things, they are going to pay for that. Go ahead. Verse 4. I will lay thy cities waste. So God is going to lay their cities waste. This Caucasian is going to go down for doing all the things that they did against our people. Go ahead. And thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. They have always hated our guts. They have always hated the indigenous people. They have always hated blacks and Latinos. Just because they, they're, they're uh, with you arm in arm, and they may be marching down, uh, down the street with you, trust and believe. According to this Bible, they will always hate you. Go ahead. And has shed the blood of the children of Israel. Those children are the same children that, that went down in the Kamloops school over in British Columbia. 215 kids put to death, buried in a, in a shallow grave. Go ahead. By the force of the sword, in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Go ahead. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood. And blood shall pursue thee, since thou hast not hated blood. Even blood shall pursue thee. So they're going to be persecuted. Look at all the things that are happening to them right now. They're being persecuted. They're going to feel that fire. Okay? Young children who had no, who had no reason to be put to death. But they were put to death. You know why? Because also these things were prophesied that they would happen. Okay? They would happen. Why? Because we, as a people, as a collective, we broke God's commandments. We broke them, and now we're suffering for it. But now it's our chance to come back to the law, statutes, and, and commandments of the Most High God as one, in unison, to cry out to Him. It's like that we can get home, get back home. Keep reading. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it him that passeth out in him that returneth. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men, and thy hills, and in thy valleys, and in all thy rivers, so they fall that are slain with the sword. Same thing that happened to us when we were being chased. When we were running through the hills, we were running down the river, and they shot us in the back, and our rivers flowed with blood. Same thing that happened to us is going to go right back to them. You don't do nothing. All you need to do is sit down and read this Bible. Thus saith the Lord, learn about your true nationality, your true heritage. 
The so-called Native Americans as a collective are known as the tribe of Gad. That's your, that's your name. That's your biblical name. It is up to you to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments and learn this Bible so that you can understand what happened, where you came from, who are you, and who you're going to become if you keep these commandments. Read. I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy cities shall not return. So this is God saying he's going to pay them back, pay the, uh, the, the Edomites back for the atrocities that happened to our people. Go ahead. And you shall know that I am the Lord. And they're going to know that I am the Lord. Get Malachi chapter 1 and verse 4. Watch this. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 4. Yep. The book of Malachi chapter 1 and verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return. So, so, the, so the, the arrogance of, of the Caucasian man. And woman, the arrogance is that, all right, God, you're going to do those things to us. You're going to bring us down. But what? What did they say? But we will return. But we will return in the Renaissance period. They return. Um, the, uh, after the Great Depression, they return. After all these, all these economic situations, they've always returned and bounced back. Go ahead. But we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build. So God says, yeah, 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 you're going to build. But I will throw down. But I'm going to throw you back down to the ground where you belong. Go ahead. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And we always know that these men are wicked. 500 nations of the Native Americans. There were 500 nations at one time. And we made, our people made treaties with them. How many treaties were broken? Several, several hundred thousand, several hundred. Treaties were made when, uh, when the Europeans came over here, and each and every last one of those treaties were broken. Okay? We can't, you can't mingle uh, water and, uh, and oil. Vinegar and oil, it won't mix. They'll separate always. We tried hard to make amends or, 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 to, or to be together with these people, and they cannot be together. We cannot be together. We can tolerate you. But at the, at, the, at the thing is, is that they will always be at war. They will always hate us. There is a perpetual hatred. All you need to do is come back to this law, come back to these commandments as Israelites, as the tribe of Gad. Follow and keep it moving. Read. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And they are always going to be called the border of wickedness. Go ahead. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. And God has always had a problem with these people because they don't keep the law. Go ahead. Verse 5. And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Right. That's us, so-called blacks, Latinos, and the Native Americans. All right. And our brothers out in Brazil. Our brothers and sisters in Brazil. So go back to Ezekiel chapter 34. Oh, excuse me, 35. Go back to Ezekiel chapter 35. Ezekiel chapter 35 in verse 9. And I will make thee perpetual desolation. So God said that he will, since they have a perpetual hatred for us, God's children, which are the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, God says, see, read it again. I will make thee perpetual desolation. I'm going to always give you a problem. For you giving my kids problems, I'm going to give you problems. Go ahead. And thy cities shall not return. Your cities are not going to return. Even though you're going to try to return, you're going to try to bounce back, your cities are not going to return. Go ahead. And you shall know that I am the Lord. And everyone's going to know that it was God that did it. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 1. I want you to start 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 4. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 4. Neither giving heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions, rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Right. Deal with this. Deal with the scriptures. Don't worry about your bloodline. Whatever you, what, what you need to realize is that this belongs to you. This book belongs to the Native Americans. It belongs to the so-called African American, the black man. The black woman, the Latin man, Latin woman. This Bible belongs to us. Go ahead. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart. 
and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. From which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. So the law is good as long as you use this law lawfully, the right way, discerning what's good, what's evil. And that's, a, that's always been a problem with the, with the churches today. They've never taught us what is the difference between good and evil. And it's not just, it, it goes beyond just um, stealing and, uh, and, and, and doing things of that nature. You have to know what's good for you to eat. What's bad for you to eat? What, how to drink? Because you can drink, but from what I understand, there's there's a there's a huge alcohol there's a huge alcoholism problem among y'all as well. You understand? There's nothing wrong with drinking, but if you drink more than what it is, then you're gonna be you're not gonna be in the right state of mind. You understand? That's why we're here. We're here to help our brothers and sisters of the indigenous people, of the Native Americans. We're here for you. You understand? If you see us purple and gold coming to your communities, please allow us to come through. You understand? Let us help you. We're here to help. Israel United in Christ is here to help and show you the truth according to the law, statutes, and commandments. This is not a Catholic book. This is not a Christian book. This is a book of commandments of the High Father, the High Lord, Most High God of the nation of Israel. And we're family. Read. Verse 9, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners. Right, because we're ungodly, we've, we've been sinners. We've been, we've been, uh, we've been dealing with other, with other deities, with other gods, and disrespecting the one true God. So now it's time for us to come, to back, come back and do it the right way. Read. For unholy and profane. For murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. Right. For murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. That's what we've been doing. We've been confused so much that we've been killing our own family in abortion, killing our, 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 our family because, uh, because we've been threatened or we've been extorted or we've been exploited. Go ahead. For manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers. Men for men stealers. Our children have been stolen. And you know something? A lot of us actually know who stole from us. But we never did anything. We never said anything about it. Now is our chance. Open your mouth. Say something. Do something. Make a change. Because we cannot be quiet anymore. We cannot be quiet anymore. We're not going to hide anything either. Israel United in Christ, that's what we're about. We're about airing things out, letting the people know what's going on, and how, why, who, what, when, where, why, according to the Bible. Okay? So get your mind right. Come and visit your local school. All right? Most sign Christ bless. Sign Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.